Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope um, you'll find it interesting and instructive. What I'm hoping to do here is show you just how simple it is to use Fusion 360's WCS probing operations. Um, these things are so useful and so quick to use, it's almost criminal not to if you happen to have a probe. So without further ado, what we have on the screen at the moment, um, appropriately enough, is the probe mounted enclosure um, for my wireless probing conversion. Um, it's a nice example because it's simple enough to show here and it's complex enough to bring out um, a couple of the useful things you can do with probing. So what we're looking at at the moment is the first op for this. Um, it will take, uh, if I click on that, yeah, there you can see the uh, outline of the stock. Um, you can see the WCS origin in the middle of the top surface. Um, the position of the WCS origin is much less critical with this probing than it is um, normally. You don't have to be able to probe that X, Y or Z directly. Um, it's generally enough that you can, before you start, take whatever tool happens to be in the spindle, um, jog it down to within a few millimetres and zero the DROs, then let the probe do the rest. So top centre of the stock is a pretty good place to, to, to do it. And that's where I usually start. Just eyeball it and off we go. Now, I've created a folder here to hold the probing operations. I'm not because I always do that, but it's just nice for this uh, demo purpose. So we'll select that folder. Um, the probing operations are on the probing tab. Um, and the WCS probe operation is always available in all, in all license variants. Um, what I have to do is select the tool. Um, for me, it's tool 99. Um, worth mentioning at this point that the 3mm diameter there is the nominal probe diameter, not the ultra accurate corrected one that's needed on the controller itself. 3mm um, is just fine for fusion. And about the only thing we have to do is say we are probing the stock and it's the top surface of the stock. There we go. And I don't want the rectangular boss, I want Z surface. Um, the remaining parameters <coughs> approach five millimeters. This is the distance away um, from the expected touch that Fusion will slow the mill down to the probing speed. Um, and the over travel of five millimeters is how far past where it's expected to find that it's prepared to go. If it encounters any touches before the five millimeter approach distance, or it doesn't encounter one. Um, by the time it's reached five millimeters past the expected point, then it will abort the program. I'll click OK, and that's that done. The other thing we would generally probe would be uh, the outline. Again, add another probe operation. We've got the tool selected already. Um, sufficient to say we're probing the stock again, and we would like top surface. Nothing to change here. Um, I'll mention in passing that this tolerance section. Um, this seems to be relevant only to micros provided by, I believe it's Renishaw. Um, the guys at Autodesk added these parameters so that people who were using those probes could make use of uh, facilities that were already in the micros. It's unlikely anyone else will ever support them. It certainly isn't supported in Pathpilot. So click OK. And that's it done. Um, it really is as simple as that. So what I'll do is I'll stop this section of the video and go over to see uh, what it would look like on the mill.
So with the probing out of the way, you can actually get on and do the rest of the machining. Um, bot 1's nothing special here, it's kind of what you'd expect. Starts by a facing op and then a roughing to go around the overall outline um, and a 2D contour to clean it up. Um, we have an adaptive to remove the large amount of material uh, that's below the spring. We're actually looking at the bottom of the, the case at the moment. Um, slightly interesting. I want to chamfer both sides of this and due to the way it's clamped in the second dot um, I have to leave the center area of this of this uh, spring solid so what I do is I'm using adaptive to clear just enough height wise so I can put the chamfer on this and leave this section hot solid um, and then we finish off the front there and put the chamfers on Right then, first stop over. Um, now it's time to do the usually more interesting second stop. Um, but before I do that, uh, there is one thing that I think I should pass on as a, as a tip at this point. Frequently made criticism of Fusion 360's CAM is the fact that you can't take the result of OP1, the stop with all the machining ops applied to it, and use that as the stop for OP2. It's a very valid criticism, it would make life a lot easier if you could but it doesn't apply to the simulator. So if I were to click on OP1, so that's OP1 selected, hold the control key down and click on OP2, I can then simulate both together. That's us into the simulator. Now I usually have my simulator set to show the stock, not the tool path, and I have the colorization mode set to comparison. That usually works quite well shrink that down a little bit. Now the point of this is that I can go immediately to the end of OP1 and you can see pretty much what OP2 is going to receive. Um, you can see the waste piece of material on the top. You can gather I've got not very much waste there at all. But if we flip it over and carry on the simulation, you can see what OP2 is going to do. So you can, in fact, check that it all works correctly. There's one caveat here, and that's that you do have to make the stock for OP1 and the stock for OP2 identical. Um, now, you may say it's entirely obvious that you should do that anyway. Um, and it's easy enough to check. If I click on OP1, you can see the outline of the stock there. Put it in a slightly better orientation. There we go. And if I click on OP2, you can see it's stock. And apart from the fact that the origin moves, the stock is clearly identical. If you have it set up like that, and why wouldn't you, um, you can make the simulator show you exactly what's going on. So, on with OP2. Yeah, it's another neat feature of Fusion to show us exactly what OP2 is going to do, what's selected and the orientation. Um, the thing that's difficult, different here is I spent some time adding the fixture, basically two soft jaws and a parallel. And in my setup for OP2, I've clicked the fixture and I've selected the three bodies that make up the fixture, the, the two soft jaws and the parallel. And our model is sitting on that parallel as it should. And that's been done in the design stage. It's a little bit of trouble, but it's well worth doing, as you hope you'll see. Um, if I open that up, I've again created a folder for 
probe operations. And this is where we can get a little bit more creative. Um, what I'll do is I will make that probe folder active. And we will add a probing operation. Tool 99 is selected as usual. This time what I'm going to probe is a little bit different. Let's rotate this round and we'll zoom in here. We're going to pick that surface there. It's the fixed jaw of my vice. It's part of the model and we don't just want to probe the center of it which is the default. We want to probe the point that I actually selected. Just there. So that will get us our y-axis because Fusion knows exactly where the origin should be relative to that. So once we've got the y-axis set, um, we can now go and probe for, uh, for our vertical z-axis. Um, what I'll do here is I'll add a second probe operation. And this time, I'm going to ask it to probe just there. Just in that point there. And it's a Z surface, and we want to probe the user select point. Now, the point about this is that my parallels are only one eighth of an inch, so a little over three, three millimeters, 3.2. Um, but the diameter of the probe tip is only three millimeters. So there's barely enough room to get in there and probe that surface. Um, that's why I had to do the Y axis first, because our Y axis um, set up just by eyeballing it won't be good enough. You need to probe um, the face of the fixed jaw first, then we can probe the top of the parallel. So with that done, we now have to work out what we're going to do with our x-axis. So a third probing operation is added. This time it's not going to be the model I'm going to probe, it's going to be the stock, because we don't have access to the x sides of the model yet, because the remaining material from the first off is still sitting there. So we will probe, ask it to probe that side. Yeah, the two sides, it's got it now. And so now it knows that we want to probe the two sides and find the midpoint. And I'll hit OK for that. And that's our probing done. Let's see that on the machine. So with the waste material left over from the first stop successfully removed, uh, we can now go ahead and reprobe the now exposed machine surfaces to do the bulk of the OP2 work. Um, to show how that's done, I've already created a folder here called Reprobe. I'll make that the active folder and I will add another probing operation. That's only very slightly different from the previous ones. Again, we have tool 99, but this time we're going to select model geometry rather than, um, rather than stock geometry. And we want to probe that face and that face. Um, again, all the other parameters have got nice defaults already, so I'll click OK. And that's us done.
with the accurate reprobing of the x-axis complete, it's now time to go ahead and finish the machining job. Um, I'll include that in the video suitably sped up, um, but I hope what you'll have got out of this is that the probing routines in Fusion are incredibly easy to use. Um, and you can do probing sequences, which yes, you could have done them by hand, but when you do them in Fusion, it's as quick to set them up as it is to do them by hand and it will run it over and over again, it will never make a mistake. It won't jog the wrong axis, it won't jog the axis in the wrong direction, it won't jog it at the wrong speed. Um, so the number of probe tips that get broken is so much less doing it this way. In any case, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the uh, rest of the machining. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.